accent play. GW is guard driven. They excel with their perimeter shooting. And Dayton has massive size. I'm interested to see the rebounding numbers. GW is 8 and 1 when they win, 1 and 8 on the boards when they lose. You see that backcourt and the scoring offense of GW on the first possession. That's the redshirt freshman, Maximus Edwards, on the first jump shot off the mark. And here comes Dayton. Defensively, George Washington is going to try to keep Dayton on the perimeter. And when Holmes catches the ball in the low post, I'm expecting a double team. Oh, Zelda jumper. He only had four points. Battling foul trouble in the game against David. Here's Edwards. Welcome to D.C. here on a Saturday afternoon. Sharnam jumps is playing point guard right now it's six foot eight but remember malachi smith is back and he really is going to help their transition game Charles Johnson, since he's been in the starting lineup at that point guard he's big at six eight his 13th start his previous 12 four and a half assists edwards that time turns it over Kamara. Talked about him defensively. That's the first of what could be many steals. When you look at Morris, he was highly successful in the SEC, and he came in here and really fits the DNA and culture that Anthony Grant brings. Transfer from Georgia in the corner. Kamara stepped on the sideline in front of the GW bench. So you like dunks, huh? Well, we got one for you here. Here's a blow by, and that's going to be the top topic for Anthony Grant in the next huddle. Edwards is really having a fantastic year. Remember, he transferred from Kansas State, and he's become your reliable third score. Look, if Edwards is your number three guy, you've got a pretty good offense. He won his high school league slam dunk contest for dunks like that. Bishop way off, and here comes Charles Jones. Great vision, but Edwards gets a beat on the cross-court feed to Blakeney in the corner. When you look at Dayton, offensively, they run a lot of NBA principles. Really good spacing, a lot of middle pick-and-roll game. The two areas of concern that I have, 14 turnovers a game is high, and I don't trust their perimeter shooting at all. Just 33% Bottom four. In the 8-10. Jaro Jones is a good shooter inside the arc. Triggers and hits for Dayton's first basket. Offensively, GW's guard driven. Bishop Edwards and Adams average almost 50 points per game between the three of them. Edwards lines it up. Hits. What a start for Maximus Edwards, first five for the Colonials. Perimeter offense. Look how wide open the paint is. This is totally playing into what GW wants. Remember, if you're big and strong, but you play on the perimeter, you're negating your advantage. Well, with an advantage to LO, the great setup. He flushes it home, and GW, a great start here at the Smith Center. Hands back and ball. Open the, help turn around this GW team and send them back to a winning season for the first time since 2017. What's the deal, though? I think you and I would have been out there early to support the Colonials. We, we would have helped out with a donut, a bagel. Uh, how about a blanket? It's kind of a little chilly. Eh? That would have been pretty, pretty valuable, too. And there's Deron Holmes getting involved. So remember, he only had four points against Davidson in the win. Battle foul trouble held to just 22 minutes. I'm liking all the dunks so far. But look how out on the perimeter the defenders are. That's allowing running to the rim. Nice pass. Ooh, that would have been a, that would have been a good opportunity for a bounce pass. Everybody defends at arm level. You put that on the floor, you've got another dunk. Okay, high low basketball, beautiful delivery, and Holmes leads the nation in dunks. How many is that? That's 51. <laughs> The 
Morrow with the post up gets it against Linda. These are two versatile forwards going head to head. Aren't they the only two players in the conference top ten in three different A-10 categories? Reed. Rebounds, steals, and blocks. Almost carbon copies of each other. There's Bishop. Leading scorer in the Atlantic 10. Eighth leading scorer in the country. At a shade under 22 a game. Lake B counters short on the three. Colonials have alternated wins and losses over the last six games. Three and two in Atlantic 10 play. Adams contested. A rebound pulled in by Mustafa Amsu and a fifth. This is a trip where you want to go to the low post. Make them double. If you do, you're playing advantage basketball on the weak side. On seal triggers and hits a 37% three-point shooter. He made a couple of distant shots against Davidson. All man to man for Dayton so far, but they do have a pretty impressive zone that I'm sure we'll see at some point. George Washington to keep possession. Up by two points. Good start for the Colonials, getting the early lead over the A-10 favorites in D.C. And presumably to watch what he can do here in Washington, D.C. He reminds me of a young version of Marvin Bagley, who played at Duke and is now with the Pistons. Supreme athleticism. He's a very good defender. And speaking of good, like Ricky Lindo's off to a quick start. you got to believe that... George Washington is very happy. They've got 12 points, and their dynamic duo of Adams and Bishop only have two. Getting scoring from other places on the roster is Amir Harris has checked in, the first guard off the bench. Ricky Lindo is a recipient of some good ball movement. When I watch GW play, their best trips go east-west, and they have five or more passes. Holmes against Noel Brown, who's the big off the bench, delivers to Brea, sharpshooter, perhaps the best for Dayton, halfway down. So happy to see Malachi Smith back on the court. He's had horrible ankle problems. Six in his career already. And he is back for his second game. He's missed a lot of time. The first three games with one ankle injury. And then 11 after the BYU game. Came back in the contest against Davidson. Played 15 minutes off the bench. Had five points and five assists. Bishop from downtown too strong. And here's Malachi Smith. Brea launched three. Give him three. So Kobe Brea from the Bronx. He was an AAU teammate of Malachi Smith. Those two connect and Dayton with him, too. Bishop attacks the rack. Holmes there to alter. Brown on the follow-up. Shot it away from behind. Brea with the block shots. Smith, great point guard. Finds his AAU teammate. Brea pulls the string. And a rebound pulled down by Bishop. Chris. Holmes is running the court so hard that he is making the perimeter defenders for George Washington suck down in the paint. That's why the Flyers are getting wide open threes in transition. I don't think I've seen a big man run as hard as Jerron Holmes. Keep in mind, this is the seven plus minutes into his first stint. He hasn't had a break yet. Oh, beautiful fade away. Impossible angle, James Bishop. That's how he scores 22 a game. He shot that over the corner of the backboard. That's a horse shot. Give him an H. Kamara makes a big passing. It's rejected by Linda. Holmes gets it back. His reverse won't go. So athletic plays at the rim already in this one. From behind. Here's the message. Don't try to dunk it in this game. Just lay it in. Bring the power. 
Rhea gets a piece of it for the second time. That's what makes Dayton such a strong team defensively. Oh, Bunks won't fall, but he'll head to the line with Noel Brown in his way. First on Brown. GW by four. And here's Brayett. Holmes sucks. The Up to speak to the team earlier this year. He's close with Eric Spolstra. So some of that NBA offense, you can see it a bit in GW. Speaking of NBA, you have Deron Holmes at the line. A lot of scouts in attendance to see what this guy can do. Well, if you look at the, the body, he's got a high center of gravity. And you, you can easily see where you could put 20 pounds on his frame. Remember, the last three possessions, he missed a dunk and two layup opportunities where he actually got fouled. But with added strength, with an NBA diet and work in that weight room, I think he can get there. The production certainly there. And one of the most productive freshman seasons in the country doing the same here in his sophomore year. Pull up jumper by Adams off, and here's Dayton with Malachi Smith. Holmes kick out. Tomorrow turns it down. Holmes double. Tomorrow lines it up. Short. Rebound volleyed out of bounds will belong to GW. Right now, Dayton can run an offense that's so simple. Spread the court, throw it to Holmes. He's going to get doubled on the dribble. Okay, there's Hunter Dean coming over. You can get any shot, but I think your best look is to go to the weak side. The best time to drive is when you swing. Is that the decision you have when you face Dayton? Is how are you going to defend home? Like, are you going to send the double on the catch, on the dribble? Yeah, everybody's mixed it up. I think that the most successful teams wait till his second dribble. Okay. You know, because that way he's already committed to making a move. I, I think you're going to see... Watch the defenders moving forward on his second dribble. The double's coming. Fourth turnover of the game for George Washington. And Kobe Elvis into the game for Dayton. You can see that brace on his right knee. So good to see Elvis. He has a lead since November 25th. Perhaps a little bit of rust there, but yeah, there's that brace on the right knee. I, I played with a brace, and it does two things. It affects your mental psyche. You're just not sure of yourself. It's a constant reminder that you're injured. And the second thing is you lose a lot of your lateral fitness. Elvis missed the last 12 games. Although he didn't dress for the previous two contests, did not get in. So this is his first game since November. He's defending all the ball. That's one of the toughest assignments in Adam. Shot clock late. Contested three, but Edwards doesn't care. He has A already for George Washington. This GW team is a veteran squad, but they're going to have huge losses to graduation after this year. Edwards could be featured next year. Bishop does have an opportunity for a COVID year if he wants to come back. The, the, the uh, offseason challenges for GW and Coach Chris Caputo to get him to come back, but that's for down the line. Now productive for his colonial team. Edwards wants another. Not that time. Yeah, I love Malachi Smith on the break. Baby brother of Scucci Smith, one of the best point guards in Flyer history. An extra step on the block. Oxio gets called for the travel. With Bishop off the court, smart move to get him a shot. I really like Maximus Edwards. I love the name, too. Maximus. His teammates call him Max, but I guess you and I, we just have to call him Maximus, right? You call him by his full name. It's a cool name. Why not? <laughs> yeah, 14 points. Last time out, see it right there. Double digits in back-to-back -back games. Reigning A-10 Rookie of the Week. He's gotten that award a couple of times this year. Coach Caputo said that he's won it twice, could have won it two other times. What a luxury, though, for a young guy to come in and to get schooled by veteran guards that know how to play, like, like James Bishop. Uh, 
pass goes right to the end line. Lindo was coming off of a screen, could not clear it in time, and it's another turnover for George Washington. Chris, don't you feel like this has to be an A-plus start for the Colonials? No doubt, no doubt. You know, the size of Dayton has been a non-issue. GW coming off of a win against George Mason. Gave George Mason their first home loss of the season. Holmes again on the double. That's that second dribble. And two dribbles. Here comes the help. Five to shoot. In the lane, Blakeney. Butter too strong. Volleyed off the rim. Banged off the backboard. And it stays with Dayton. So far, Hunter Dean and Ricky Lindo are not doing a lot offensively, but they have a huge contribution in this game because they're closing up the paint, doing a stellar job on the glass. Anthony Grant, National Coach of the Year, that year that ended without the NCAA tournament. They, of course, had a great team that year. 29-2. I think R.J. Blakeney is a guy that can get going offensively. He's got a good matchup in this one. There's a turnover. Bishop open courts. Fancy footwork and an impressive scoop. That guy loves to score, doesn't he? 22 points per game. Oh, there's off balance. He's not afraid of contact. First game back in a couple of months. Bishop, he said he loves to score! That's how! The hoop and the horn for James Bishop. I also think that Bishop is a binge scorer. He's had two 40-point games this year. Let it start it, you may be in trouble. Completes the three-point play. He's one of only two players in the country with multiple 40-point games this season. GW has scored the game's last ace. That's a big team that's won eight of their past nine. Well, Hunter Dean is pitching a shutout inside, but you know, you've got to pick your spots. Don't try to deny before the pass comes in, because you know you've got a double team coming to help out. And the reason I say that, Chris, Hunter Dean has immense value. If GW has to go to the bench because he's in foul trouble, it, it's a terrible drop-off. Team that goes seven, baby, eight deep. At best. So far, right in the starters heavy. Build a 10-point lead. Bishop, no look, Edwards on the baseline. Bishop a playmaker this year, and he has weapons like Edwards. That's the same angle where before they threw the pass to Lindo out of bounds. That one was a bounce pass where the defense couldn't cover. I like it. And that is the next step in Bishop's game. His assists way up over by the contest. And the Colonials looking for more. Mara, perhaps the most versatile defender in the A-10, guarding Bishop. Dean's teardrop. Holmes tries to save and does. I'm just not impressed with the Flyers' offense right now. I think they're very stagnant. Look at the interior defense. They're really plugging the lane because I don't think the GW respects the perimeter game for the Flyers. So Holmes makes the cuts against it. And gets the basket. So, R.J. Blakeney from Baltimore playing here in D.C. Gets a three-point opportunity. R.J. Blakeney is a two-way player. Really locked up Richmond's foster lawyer earlier this week. Comes from a pretty good background, doesn't he? His mom played at Maryland. I guess... If you're in the Blakeney family, you learn defense at a young age. <laughs> yeah, Mom Daphne saw her there in attendance. Played in the Final Four at Maryland back in 1989. 
Lake Mead cannot complete the three-point play, and Dayton remains down double figures. Anthony Grant's probably saying, I'd love it. Adams and Bishop and Edwards would get subbed. Those guys never come out of the game. Nope. Tough reverse. Rebound ripped down by Kamara. Sorrow Chomps. Kamara takes his time. Bullseye. Jumani Kamara. First three of the game. One of the benefits for Kamara is these NBA scouts are coming to watch home and they walk away and say, man, I, I would love a guy like Kamara on my NBA team that can lock anybody up. Drive, kick. Once again, on penetration, GW is doubling. Kamara keeps improving his game. He's got perimeter skills. The next thing I'd like to see from him, one or two dribbles and power to the rim. It's a power to the rim. Halfway down, pops out. Smith getting more comfortable. Fires the hole. And Lindo says no. <laughs> These plays at the rim on both sides do not go in there soft. How do you like this matchup? Point guard versus Kamara. <laughs> he stays right with him. Adams hits. Brandon Adams from distance. The team best 36% from three. I think this right here is Dayton's best lineup with Charles Johnson and Smith on the court. Training triples. Kamara. Second straight long ball. Dayton within seven. Once again, look who Kamara at six foot eight is covering. Covering Adams, sticking with him to the corner. And that's that versatility. Wow, throws it down. Threes and tucks. A game for the uh, you know, advanced metrics of basketball at the rim and behind the line. <laughs> that's what you want. So far in D.C., under four in this first half. Chris Lewis to McCormick. Starting an eight-set doubleheader here on USA. Wide open, Brea, best shooter on the team. Was just a bit short. Bishop back to work. Kamara in his way. And that's why Kamara, one of the top defenders in the Atlantic 10. 3-12 left, and GW continues their impressive start. Attacking the lane is a good idea. Bouncing back from a loss the game before. I had no expectation that George Washington could be plus 10 points in the paint in this game, but they are. Maybe that was just outside the paint, but it was close. Adams dips in, gets two, GW by 11. Again, Dayton comes in on you know, the preseason A-10 favorites, getting healthier. He's not projected to come in and take care of business. GW says, hey, not so fast. Smith, not much elevation on that three-pointer. Offensive rebound, this time attacks the basket and scoops it in. The all-conference second team preseason, Malachi Smith made the rookie team a year ago. Ankle injuries during the offseason. A uh, whistle and a foul up top. Chris, there, there are a lot of times that numbers can play tricks with you. But there's one that's really telling. For GW, when they rebound, they're very good. They are 8-1 this year when they win the rebounding battle. They're 1-8 when they get out-rebounded. So far in this game, plus 6 versus a really good defensive rebounding team. As a matter of fact, Dayton leads the A-10 in that category. Got to draw up a recipe. Bull off an upset. GW, 2-4, draws the foul to Bishop against on seal and Bishop will head back to the line a 75% free throw shooter so James Bishop spent most of his career off the ball as a shooting guard this year 
he, he's really learned to get his teammates involved. He pushes, he probes, he's always looking for a better shot. I feel really good about putting him on my first team all A ten this year. Wasn't really a bold prediction. So you lead the league in scoring, you're second in the league in assists, eighth in the country in points per game. Yeah, yeah, that was not might, a stretch. I think you might get on that team. I thought you could be a tough grader. I don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> Bishop misses a free throw there. He's also second in the conference in free throws made. He gets to the line a lot. Right there. 50% shooting for GW against an excellent defensive team. Kamara lines it up, looking for his third three of the half. Relatively quiet, just five. Averages 17. Bishop, rifles into the lane. Ricky Lindo Jr. with a tomahawk. GW has better energy. Are you sensing that? Back in the basket, and, and their dunks go down with a lot of energy. I know that. <laughs> Well, Bow on the baseline. The, the biggest difference is the Colonials have the best player in the building wearing white today. You know, Bishop could have shot this ball. He occupied two defenders. And to go up with your opposite hand along the baseline, Lindo deserves some credit, too. Edwards on that last foul. They, they pull something together on offense. Holmes on the bench, Kamara, hook shot, too much. Battle for the board, Lindo, that's what he does, he's cracked. Seal also on the deck. A whistle, and I believe a timeout call for George Washington. Yes, they got it in. So, the ball was loose on the floor, and it was Edwards that made a really high place. To be a sleeping giant, you have this great arena, the Smith Center, that have some updates in the future. Have a fan base that's engaged, alums that are invested. And of course, the DMV area right around here it has a lot of talent. Uh, first time we've seen the Flyers in a 2-3 zone. I think we may, we may see some pressure full court, too. Clinto almost thundered it down again. Stan can't connect on the interior. Still a double-digit lead, and GW could get a last look. Two through five, the Flyers are massive. They average about six foot eight, if you don't count Scoochie Smith's little brother. Mara, his hook hasn't had the touch. Colonials can hold for one. Looks like Anthony Grant thought that was a double dribble. Bishop side step three. Well, shorts. Ricochets off the rib with 1.6. Plenty of time for a baseline out of bounds. Keep an eye on Lindo. Maybe he'll get a back screen. Good time for a lob. Hey, Edwards off balance, hits! What an exclamation point on the first half for George Washington! Beautiful Grant mentioned to his guys in the halftime locker room. Edwards joining Bishop. You can see right there, those two have combined for 22. Mentioned George Washington gave up points in the second half in their last game. Well, Dayton had a 13 nothing run early in the second half against Davidson in their last contest. Thanks in large part to Charles Jumps, and he hits a three right out of the halftime game. What a bright future for Charles Jumps. The first player ever from Mongolia to play D1 basketball. He's the Michael Jordan of Mongolia. Can you imagine the pressure on him, though? Yeah, that's a lot. Adams, too strong. Well, one of the things that Coach Anthony Grant mentioned is that Sharov Johns has done such a great job at the on-ball role that he's kind of been thrusted into with the injuries surrounding some of Dayton's guards this season. 
So with those injuries, he is held up as being that main playmaker in the starting lineup and averaging three and a half assists per game. Well, imagine there's an injury to Elvis, an injury to Malachi, and the coach says, look, I know you're a freshman. You're trying to figure out where the library on campus is. And yeah, I want you to take over my offense, an offense of a top 25 preseason team. Garra drops again. That time wide. Rebound tipped to Holmes. Kamara on the interior. Turn and floats it in. And this is the expectation from an energy level that we thought from the Flyers. And Anthony Grant, even though you're not going to see it, I think somewhere deep inside he's smiling. He knows his guys are engaged. Can't see it on the outside, though, Chris. Stoic. Not emotional. They're on the sidelines. Interior passing, Dean Hammer. Kamara picks up the foul. We'll send Hunter Dean to the line. Hunter Dean is really a key player. Six foot ten, highly skilled. He knows his role and he sticks with it. Pretty good job shooting 73%. Why? Because he likes to dunk. He gets offensive rebounds and puts putbacks. What's the highest field goal percentage you've had this season? It's not 73. <laughs> I'm pretty certain of that. Well, he made his first 13 shots this season, so that's a good start. On the way to 73%. And I didn't shoot 73% in the pregame. <laughs> Holmes has got to get involved. Well, Kamara, instead of taking on that inside roll, back-to-back -back hook shots, he is dead. Really can't be surprised when Kamara is scoring. He had a game versus VCU, 27-10. and 10. Yeah, Of course, he's known on this end as a great defender. That time picking up Adams, having no problem defending the smaller guard, slapping it away. I really like, though, the matchup of Blakey staying with Bishop. He's got elite defense versus electrifying offense. Bishop, though, has been a playmaker with the passing. Dean can't come in, diving on the deck. Lindos tries to scoop it up. Blakey there for Dean. It's a jump ball. The arrow will keep it here. We talked a little bit about Holmes. Seven straight games, Chris. He scored over 20 points. The last two, he's averaging eight points per game. First half of this game, one for seven from the field. Remember, the NBA scouts are in the building to watch him. I think you could say so far, the last three games, he's been in a slump. Just one on the shot clock off the inbounds, and I don't even know if Bishop realized that as he caught it. Shot clock violation. It's very surprising because... His whole bench was yelling at him to shoot. They were saying one second. It is pretty loud here. We're anticipating the largest crowd of the season at the Smith Center. They become not just a regional, but almost like a national program in the way that they travel. Of course, Dayton sells out every home game that they've had. They sold out every game before the year. It was interesting. One of the things that they put on their uh, website is instructions on how to buy tickets to the away venues if you wanted to see Dayton play. Lindo on that foul, his second. Well, the reason it's such a big crowd, you mentioned it earlier that Chris Caputo gave out coffee and donuts this morning. That's true. You were first in line. Charles Trump saves it. Beautiful fadeaway off the back of the rim. Edwards secures the rebound. Push up with that blinding first step. He's used that bounce pass a few times to set up a big. Dean can't finish. A lot of credit to the Colonials' transition defense. Dayton, their flyers in transition. They only had three fast break points in the first half. A foul, but a push off for Kamara, and that is his third. Anthony Grant not happy about that. Wants an explanation. 
I thought it might have been a travel and not a foul. Well, he gave him a little bit of a shot. But Chris, this game's been really physical. I, I think I could have let that one slide. You gave me one of those on the greeting earlier <laughs> this morning. Once again, Bishop Blake. They're running screen game to try to get mismatches in their favor. I count that as a mismatch. Adams goes to work. Takes out his do-it-yourself hit, Brandon Adams. The largest scoring increase in the Atlantic 10. He only averaged a shade over eight a game last year. He's close to 17 a contest this season. Specialty. He's missed his last two. Bishop tries the wrap pass to Dean, deflected out of bounds. They'll stay with George Washington up next. Colonials still holding on to a double-digit lead at home. So let's get the rest of the way and then lose to a team in the finals. I think that's a scenario where you could see two teams this year. But right now, you have to say that's a long shot, especially with Dayton being down by 10 points on the road. Say, it feels like Dayton putting the pieces back together. Some of their injured players coming back. Malachi Smith, Kobe Elvis. They've won eight of their past nine. But down 10 here. Bishop makes it down 12 off balance mid-range as the shot clock winds down. <laughs> I love the smile on Bishop's face. I don't think there's anybody that likes scoring better than James Bishop. He scored 2,100 points in, the, in high school as the Baltimore Catholic League Player of the Year back before college. Went to LSU, filling it up. George Washington, there's Deron Holmes. Can Dayton get him going? He's third in the conference in scoring at close to 19 a game. But his scoring has been down the last couple of games. It's only the 10th point in the paint for the Flyers so far this entire game. Keeps the dribble alive, has a switch against Holmes. Adams, a sliver of space. Too much. It's a moving screen going on Charles Jones. Yeah, great body control under the lane. One of the few times he's had success. And off the dribble, right over the top of a shot blocker. Bishop for three. It just seems like somebody who's tough to guard. He has the ability to shoot the three at high volume. He loves the mid-range. Finding uh, speed to the basket. The offense is really pretty clear. Good spacing by GW. They've got three creators, and they've got two screen setters. It's hard to cover them. They show a left-handed floater. Good Wait. advantage numbers-wise. Bray, a bounce pass. Oh, is bumped the foul. Lindo knew it. It is called for his third foul. One of the fastest sprinters in all of college basketball. Deron Holmes creates so much pressure with his rim running. And I, I think it's so important for guards. When you get a big guy that's going to run that hard, you've got to reward him. Remember, Chris, the guards, they only have to run top of the key, top of the key. Big guys have to run the full 94 feet. Last 14 games, Holmes. Over 20, close to averaging a double-double. How about that last category, though? Foul was strong. He puts pressure on those of the NBA dignitaries. They're watching very closely because what Holmes does, he can switch in the pick-and-roll game. He runs the court well. Those are two skills that the NBA teams are always looking for. If he can become that pick-and-roll phenom in a lob threat, then all of a sudden, his stock will soar. Rim runner, versatile defensively, that's the key. Travel, Bronzy Samuels, limited minutes, off the bench for GW. He gets called for the turnover. 
Okay, let's talk some strategy here. Now, all of a sudden, you see Holmes getting involved. He got the dunk, he got to the free throw line. Go right back to him and see if he's on fire. That's the ball screen. Smith flips him off, uses a floater off the front rim. Samuels chases, eyes ahead. Crossover dribble to the left. Cut off by Graham. Rifles out. Playing open as Harris takes it and lays it in. Lakeley, big hot step on the other end and draws the contacts on Hunter Dean. And that is the third on Dean. Totally unacceptable to have a guy catch the ball at 30 feet and drive all the way. Somebody's got to step up there and take a charge. Talk about the offense for GW and what they're able to do on that side of the floor and up against the best A-10 defense. And so far, would you say that that offense for GW has been more efficient than you would have thought heading in? I, I'm surprised. Yeah. Th there's no doubt. And if I'm looking for a hidden key, offensively, GW is switching sides of the court. They're going from right to left. They drive and kick. I look at Dayton's offense, and I feel like they're not getting anything done in transition. Limited in the post, and I don't think they're having as many five-pass possessions. Here's the first time we're seeing the full-court pressure. GW was working on this at practice yesterday. Spent a lot of time on their press break. But that time, Dayton cries it away. Big dive by Adams. Who throws it down? Oh! Who throws it down? And the press works for the Flyers, and they're back within six. And that's a bad idea to let Deron Holmes feel that rim in his hands like that. Have you, have you seen a little bit of a jump start? The energy level, the voltage of the Flyers has increased. It feels like their arms have gotten longer. They're just that much more active on the defensive end. Holmes alters that shot. Tip on seal as he save it. It is the possession. Two full-court press possessions for Dayton. They get a bucket and a turnover. Exactly what Anthony Grant is looking for. That would have been better off just to hang the ball. In a bad part of town. Adams there at the backboard. Myers were down as many as 13. Shorts on ground, backing to it. 12 minutes to play. Smith Center in Washington, D.C. Brown, big bounce. Left the hook. Beautiful. Sets for Smith. Lakeney off the pass. Line drive three. Holmes sits the rebound. Dayton's usually big. With second chance points. Holmes against Brown. The big's going at it. Brown wins the battle. You notice that GW is not doubling on the second dribble anymore. That's a halftime adjustment. Smith cries it loose, remains with the Colonials, and Coach Chris Caputo coming up. Dayton trying to climb back, get it. GW holding it. Dayton 5-1. GW 3-2 in the A-10. The Flyers were down 14 at halftime. Now within eight. Out of the timeout, this is an opportunity to try to get your best player to the win. Good call by Caputo in the last timeout. Up 13 points. And cut it to six. GW with that response. Back to back baskets. I'm sealed. No. Contested board. And it's won by Edwards of GW. Navigating through traffic. Count the floater. James Bishop, the fourth. Yes, sir.
I do like the last GW timeout. Chris Caputo says, okay, here's what I want to dial up. Two Bishop buckets back to back, give us our lead back. What a nice floater, the mid-range game, I think is the best thing he does offensively. And it was a six point lead for GW since then, six straight for the Colonials. No surprise that that run comes with Jerron Holmes on the bench. Pretty good idea. The best shot blocker goes to the bench. Why don't you drive? There's no resistance at the rim. Not any foul trouble in this one, Holmes. Just getting a rest. Elvis from the corner. His first game back since late November. He misses, but Kamara right place, right time. Here's a good idea for GW. Kamara has three fouls. Drive at him. If he gets number four, your job gets a lot easier. Bishop sees a crease, fade away from the elbow, rolls out. This guy can score. So, Chris, what do you think of James Bishop so far? I think you had that Allen Iverson comparison earlier with the uh, cornrows and the mid range the handle. Got a little bit of that to his game. Don't you always have to say he's not oh, he's not as good as Allen Iverson, but like the approach, okay? I'm talking about the approach. How he scores. Fearless. That's the fourth foul just then on Ricky Lindo Jr. That was one of the keys that Chris Caputo told us is that he cannot afford to have Lindo in foul trouble against this front court for Dayton. Tamara is a 68% free throw shooter. So there's Lindo heading to the bench and Amir Harris coming in. Harris, a fifth-year player at George Washington. He also spent a year at Nebraska. He's battled knee injuries throughout his career. So now these are big minutes for Harris. And the value of the free throws, hey, you get points, but you also get to set up your press. They better hurry and get it over. They just do. Sloppy in the backcourt, and then sloppy in the front court. It's off the hands of Bishop out of bounds. You see... The value of the press isn't always getting a steal. Sometimes you just speed your opponent up and they make uncharacteristic mistakes. There's a floater. Smith leads as it goes off the front of the rim, but he'll be rewarded with free throws. So Malachi Smith from the Bronx. And this is just his sixth game of the year. He missed the first three. And then after that, 11 in December and January with ankle trouble. That was his first game back in the midweek Tuesday against Davidson. Played 15 minutes off the bench. Last year's all-rookie team member. It was preseason all a 10 second team. Expected to be a big contributor to Dayton this year. He's battled those injuries. I never hold back my praise of Malachi Smith. And after missing 11 games, you probably saw the collapse against VCU. If Malachi Smith is healthy and playing, there is no way they lose that lead. That's the kind of floor general he is. He was the top point guard recruit in New York during his high school class, his dad was a basketball player who was recruited by Anthony Grant back in the day. So there's that initial connection. If nothing else, by breaking the press, it takes about 10 seconds off the shot clock before they get into their offense. Shot clock down to six. Bishop. No. Oh, Brea flies for the board. Excellent D. These feel like key moments for both teams. About eight changes to play. Dayton back within single digits. Smith at the controls. Kobe Elvis. Smith jab steps with 10 to shoot. Probes inside. Delivers to Kamara. Misses the three. Rebound tipped on the baseline. And Bishop secures. Might be a good idea to look at a double team and get the ball out of the guard's hands. 
He picks up the dribble. That's the active thing. defense. Elvis forces the steal. I'm seal wing three. No. Well, ultimately, Anthony Grant is going to look at this game and say, five out of 19 from three is not good enough to win on the road. Bishop has a runaway. James Bishop making noise in this second half. Ten points in tap time. That's what I'm saying right there. It might be a good idea to get the ball out of his hands with a double team. He's efficient in this game, especially inside the arc. He's 0-4 from three. 9 of 16, though, from the floor. He's made 9 of his 12 twos. Smith, too much on it. Battle for the board, the paint. Harris, first to the floor. Transition for the Colonials. A lot of times, teams that are high scoring, they're run and gun. They're just efficient. George Washington is not playing a fast pace right now. He delivers two off the setup from Bishop, who had scored eight straight for GW. That time uses the passing to set up feed and a Dayton timeout. Washington back up 12 at home. And this is the A-plus sequence. Guards, pick and roll. Again, still plenty of time, though, to turn this around. His team down 12. The second half has belonged to Bishop. It's George Washington led by 14 at half. Still holding on to a 12-point lead. And that's the preseason A-10 favorites who have played strong as of late. James won 8 of 9. A whistle away from the ball. When we talked to Chris Caputo, he had mentioned that he loves the high scoring, but he's top five rebounder. And Yuri Collins, who you can see next, he's got to be on the list too. He, he's the best passer, leads college basketball and assists. My concern about St. Louis is that Gibson Jimerson is the only three point threat on that team. I have concerns about that, but that's a big game for them. That's a big shot for Dayton. How about Kobe Elvis? Just his eighth game of the year and played since the game against BYU on November 25th. It's a big three to pull Dayton back within single digits. That knee injury, you see that brace on his right knee, defending on the ball. Edwards, the redshirt freshman, is slotted. Holmes from the weak side, block shot. Flyers flying. Blakeney from the corner, in and out. You put your best defender on the other team's best player. Kamara is six foot eight. Bishop is six foot two. They're going to run screens to get Kamara off of him. And Holmes hedges too far, gets called for the foul. Holmes not in foul trouble in this game, unlike the game against Davidson. To put it in perspective, Holmes and Kamara this year have more block shots than six teams in the A-10 as a whole. Woo. That's a big shot right there by Elvis. And the benefit is it allows them to set up their press. So once again, let's talk strategy. They want Bishop playing against somebody other than Kamara. How do they make that happen? They take him up top, they set a screen, and Dayton has to switch. It's a really good adjustment. Well, right now, they're targeting Holmes. Adams has him. Pull up for the free throw line. Runner in, Holmes holds up defensively on the perimeter. No double coming. Makes three dribbles, uses the hook shot. That left hand has been a weapon for Holmes. He has 11. This is the run that we've been waiting for, but it has to continue on the defensive end. George Washington is trying to isolate their big guys. Wow, wow, what a finish. Bishop has eclipsed the 20-point mark. Make it 12 points for Holmes, who has the ball on top of the arc. He wants to post up. 
And it's baseline. Dean says no. Holmes wanted a foul. Colonials transition. Porter Lindo's open. Turns down the three. Dean thinks better of it. Work to the corner. Edwards goes. Charles Ox skips the board. Both the way. Date possession. It does take up three seconds from the shot clock. The underrated star of this game is Hunter Dean because of his defense. Holmes thought he had a dunk. He was wrong. Now Lindo goes out, and that creates a problem because Hunter Dean is your most accomplished post defender. But I do believe that Kamara or Holmes has an opportunity to get to the rim. See, in the post, Holmes shrugging his shoulders, not sure where he should be or what he should do. He does get the ball on the block against Dean again. Holmes can't score, gets it back. Deposits too. Might be a good adjustment down the stretch to go back to doubling on the second dribble against Holmes. He's getting too deep. He needs help inside. George Washington trying to hold on, pull off a big upset at home in front of one of their biggest crowds that they've had this season. Bishop is met. It's another block shot for Dayton. Charles Johns for Holmes. Deposits Blakely in and out. GW wants a basket interference for hanging on the rim. Doesn't matter. They get possession. Oh, my gosh. That is such a blown opportunity to miss a dunk when you had a five-on-four advantage. And that rim has gotten a workout with plenty of dunks throughout the game. They're going to want battle to handle. Don't let him go to his left hand. Adams gets right past Charles on Up top is fouled. Deron Holmes slid over. Anthony Grant, I race. 57 50. George Washington trying to hold on for the upset. Those guards are going with their strong hands. They're so good at finishing a trap. It's almost like the shot blockers are not even there. And that's the reason that GW, which is a much smaller team, is plus 10 points in the paint. I'm shocked by that. I would have never guessed that would happen. Adams is the best free throw shooter on the Colonials at 86%. And George Washington is back up 9, 235 left. First play out of a timeout, a lot of motion for the Flyers, but the shot clock already down to 10. Brea picks up the dribble. Charles Jones, D3, breaks it. Lindo flies to the board. Two for 11 from the Flyers, three-point shooting in the second half. That's been a big reason they have not made a comeback. Each team with 16 fouls, which means the one and one for the next foul committed, and it's immediate. Mike Charles Jones. A one and one upcoming for George Washington. A chance to increase their lead to double digits. And who do, do you not want to follow? The guy who shoots 86%, Brandon Adams. It's the first of the one and one. His brother played in the 8-10, was the player of the year at Jalen Adams at St. Bonaventure. Charles Johns on the bench. Malachi Smith playing the closing role for Dayton at the lead guard. One of two on the trip. Holmes boxes out for the board. Down 10, under two minutes. You'd like to have some three-point weaponry at your disposal. They don't. Backdoor, Brea. Big stuff for Dayton. Sets up the press. Adams right through it. Adams is going to keep the ball. He's their best free throw shooter. You can't put him on the line even though he just missed one free throw. Blocking foul. Smith can't believe it. He's stunned. 
He thought he had position, but it said Adams back to the line for a one and one. We shouldn't be surprised the Colonials are improving on the defensive end. Chris Caputo was the defensive coordinator for the Miami Hurricanes under Jim Laranega. I said, how much, you know, since you've been in the ACC, how much have you had to learn about a team like Dayton? He said, well, I do know this, that last year as a coach at Miami, we played Dayton. They beat us. We were an Elite Eight team. And then they went ahead and they played Kansas and beat them. They won it all. So I came into this game with great respect for Anthony Grant's squad. Anthony Grant's team has generated the respect throughout college basketball, what they were able to do year in and year out. But George Washington, their most anticipated home game of the year, and they've lived up to it. It would take an epic collapse by George Washington, and that usually happens with turnovers and bad decisions. I just don't see that happening with three high-quality guards and a couple of big men that know their role really well. Dayton timeout. I mean, this team could just see the dramatic difference in the structure this year with Chris Caputo in his first year compared to what the team was last year. He's more unselfish. He's also shown up. Brea needs this. Short doesn't hit anything. And a foul before the interception. Edwards with a sheepish grin as he'll walk the length of the floor as the George's Army at the Smith Center is feeling it with a minute nine left. You just shared all those beautiful numbers about James Bishop. I guess we're going to have to add a block shot on there because I think he got a piece. You can see what the vision would be for Chris Caputo's team for the future. I mean, this building has energy, nice, cozy environment, fans that know hoops here in D.C. And a one and one gets the friendly roll. Edwards had a big first half. That's his first points of the second half. He is 14. So it's going to be important to have just elite roster management for George Washington. And this win will help because they can sell the vision. Remember, Bishop is a senior, possibly could come back, but Adams, Lindo, Dean are all seniors. Those four guys combined for 56 points per game, so this team will look much different for George Washington next year. On seal, lays it in under a minute left. Timeout date. As the ball goes through, cut to 10 for 59.3. Talking a lot about Gene Dayton since March of 2017. And we just showed you that schedule. If they play like this, every one of those games is winnable. Adams to the line. 10th foul on Dayton, so two free throws in the double bonus. Mustafa Amsil for Dayton, their starting forward, said, hey, we get every team's best shot. Every game we play is the biggest for the other team. That's the life in the 8-10 for Dayton. Uh, they got GW's best shot today. I I'm impressed, and I, I think you said it very well. And not only for Dayton, but the burden of excellence for Jerron Holmes is that he's at the top of every single scouting report. And he's seeing a lot more double teams. He's seeing some some real emphasis on stopping and making a passer. It's his opportunity now to take his game to another level. You know, for instance, last year, I think he struggled putting the ball on the floor. He's better this year, but he's got a whole other gear he's got to search for. Smith gets the contact on Ricky Lindo Jr., and that is his fifth. He is done. Perhaps the uh, most important offseason objective for Chris Caputo when he took the job was convincing Ricky Lindo Jr. to come back. He had entered the transfer portal, decided as a local guy to return back to GW. And he's made such a difference when he's been out of foul trouble, in this game included. He did some big, some versatile defenders on Kamara and Holmes. He was up to the task. And remember, he, he's just a superb athlete, a Maryland transfer, so he's a Big Ten caliber athlete. 
and, and he's had a really, really good year. It, it's kind of interesting how these rosters have been managed. GW is filled with grad transfers, and Anthony Grant has really built a culture by keeping his guys together. The tough-minded guard, Anthony Grant calls Malachi Smith the toughest on the team. He's had to deal with the ankle injuries. When he gets truly comfortable, you imagine Dayton will reach that next year. You talked about their maybe uh, unstructured offense that we've seen at times. He's just the guy that when he's on the floor, you said he seems to put them in the right place. In the backcourt, a trap and a jump ball on the arrow means it stays with Dayton. Wow, good development. Excellent trap on the inbounds pass and that's a mistake you've got to be able to get rid of the ball the best opportunity whoever inbounds it should step right back in that should have been a bounce pass Flyers not done Camaro blows past Dean and throws it in with 41.5 and the press continues get it in. time out called Multiple timeouts still remaining for GW. Nobody said it'd be easy closing out the 8-10 favorites. Not team across from them in the seed line in the big tournament either. And, and VCU and St. Louis will both be saying, well, what about us? Now, I still think that Dayton is my pick to win the Atlantic 10 tournament this year. Do you have a pick? I mean, calling this Dayton game, you just go in depth and you realize just how talented this team is. You know, preseason ranked. They brought back pretty much everybody from an excellent team last year. So I have to imagine going in, yeah, I, that would be my pick. I agree. Do you have a Super Bowl pick? I know we're still not well, even there yet. <laughs> as long as we're doing picks. On NBC, you got to check out the, uh, the game later on today between the uh, Chiefs, which I think is the uh, odds-on favorite for a lot of people against the Jaguars. So I, I will, just because they're on our air, you know, the, the Chiefs. You know, if I was a tight end, I, I imagine myself as Travis Kelsey with more speed. Oh, more speed. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, maybe more height. Yeah. 10 point game. About 30 seconds left. Elvis zooms to the ring. And Dayton continuing to play out the string. He's just got to get some missed free throws, but George Washington not playing along. Their guards, Bishop, Adams, good free throw shooters. Walk the length of the floor, double bonus. Yeah, what we're seeing is GW is covering the three point line so hard that. Dayton is getting layups, which is good, except at the other end, George Washington is getting two free throws, and that's not good if you're a Dayton Flyer fan. And stretches like this certainly alter the uh, efficiency stats. <laughs> he's basically getting two points per possession. The nation's eighth leading scorer, James Bishop. Over his average, 22. Elvis, high rise, book it. There's the three to cut it to seven. Trap in a foul. <laughs> Bishop saying this is this is all good for me. I'll just hold the ball, <laughs> make some free throws, bump up that scoring average a little bit. And yeah, nice shot fake. A lot of a lot of guys when they're on the three-point line, they shot fake and they want to relocate, maybe try to drive. Kobe Elvis is really good with that sidestep where he gets the defense to jump because they're scared to death of his three-point shooting and then he takes that little high half step over to the left very effective GW really not missing at the line down the stretch I had some serious doubts if we would see this high octane offense be able to score over 70 against Dayton. They've done it with ease. Count the basket and a foul. That's the last thing George Washington wanted. See some rolling in the eyes from the guys here at the Smith Center. Cheering for George Washington. As Malachi Smith have a chance to get three points on the possession. Cutting it to a two possession game with a made free throw. We know that their press can work. 
Big one coming up. For those of you tuning in, looking for LaSalle taking on St. Louis, that will start it on the NBC Sports app at 2.35 p.m. Eastern. And we'll have that live for you here on USA and at the conclusion of this one. Is Dayton trying to climb in this? And 19 seconds left that this free throw goes in for Smith. It's a two-possession game. Get the ball in quickly. Adams trapped. No held ball instead of foul. Elvis with a blank stare. <laughs> Adams chuckles. Go ahead to the free throw line. Free throws 23 and 24 coming up for George Washington. And more than half of them have come in this stretch. One of my concerns at halftime, and I shared it with you, Chris, is that when George Washington played in the revolutionary rivalry with George Mason. Say that ten times fast. <laughs> they, they gave up 50 points in the second half. I kind of thought that may happen with Dayton, but it didn't. I think that the George Washington defense was much better than what I saw against the Patriots. Improvement. You can almost see it game to game for Chris Caputo's team. A healthy serving of free throws for Brandon Adams. 18 on the game. Smith broke it. 11.1. Five-point game. There's the foul. It just can't seem to get the steal, though, that Dayton needs to get those back-to-back -back baskets. GW averages 76 points per game. They're sitting on 74 with a couple free throws. I know that, that the number doesn't matter that much, but the thing that's significant, Dayton has the best scoring defense in the Atlantic 10. They give up 59 points per game. This is not going to make Anthony Grant very happy, and it's not going to help the Flyers' scoring defense numbers. Yeah, this is the most points that they've allowed in a game in 8-10 play this year. The most points they've allowed this season was the 79 to BYU, but that was an overtime game. Elvis traps. Five seconds left. Dean defends the interior. Bray a fadeaway in one second. That basket won't count. And GW pulls it off against the 8-10 favorites. 76-69. The Colonials knock off the Flyers.